<laughs> yeah, we're already bolting. Woo! <laughs> oh, what a gorgeous girl, though. I gotta wrangle this beast again? It's a species showcase. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. Today I am rehousing my Syriopagopus lividus, commonly known as the cobalt blue tarantula. As you can see at the beginning there, she was not a very pleasant beast when I first got her and I'm going to rehouse her into a nicer enclosure because currently she is in a plastic bin and I never get to see her because it's opaque and of course she burrows all the time. So I wanted to set her up in something a little bit nicer. This video almost didn't happen because I shot all the B-roll footage of the tarantula, me rehousing it into the new enclosure and got some video of it inside the new enclosure. And when I went to put it into my computer, it started to download, but it looked like it was old footage and stuff that I had shot before I had formatted the card. So I was a little bit confused. I stopped the download, I pulled it back out, Put it back in and then it said that the card could not be read and needed to be reformatted so i was mortified i tried to put it in different computers i tried to put it back in the camera just to see if anything would read the card and it did not it said that the card was corrupted and needed to be reformatted and i could not use any of the footage that i had already taken so i'd spent hours doing that and it was just lost it was gone so I almost threw my hands up in the air and said, forget it. I'm just going to do something else and uh, just delay my video even longer. But um, I decided that I was not going to do that and I, was, I could reshoot all of that footage. Fortunately, it was only the B-roll footage that I had lost. All the footage of me setting up the enclosure and decorating it and putting all stuff in there and everything, all that was, was shot prior to that. So I had already saved that information so I didn't lose any of that. It was just the tarantula footage. So that, I had to pull the tarantula back out. I had to reshoot all of that and uh, I was able to get it the second time around. So I had been sitting on this enclosure for a little while, probably about six months, and I was thinking about what I wanted to put inside of it. I knew that I wanted to make it as naturalistic as possible, and my idea was to set up something for a moisture-dependent species. And I wanted to set it up with mosses and some plants and things that I wanted to get nice and overgrown. But I've been collecting orchids. My daughter got me back into orchids, and I've been collecting like micro orchids, which are little tiny orchids and stuff. So I really wanted to incorporate that that into one of the enclosures, especially since it was going to be a moisture dependent enclosure. So I couldn't think of a better species than to put in there than the Syriopagopus lividus. So here it is. For this enclosure, I've chosen the Zoomed 12 by 12 by 12, and it comes with a naturalistic cork bark background. This wasn't my first choice for enclosures. My first choice would have been the Exoterra 12x12x12 because it has the double doors and I feel like that would be better for me, but I could not find that one, so I ended up buying this one. Before setting up your enclosure, always make sure to silicone down your cork bark background because when it gets wet, this will swell up and it will also bow, and this may allow your tarantula to have access behind the backdrop, and this will make it very difficult for you to get it out. And always be sure to weigh it down with something heavy while it's still drying and this will ensure a good stick. I ended up eventually putting a heavy brick over this because the skull was just not heavy enough to keep it from bowing up.
Because I'd gotten back into collecting orchids, I wanted to make sure that I put an orchid in this enclosure because it was going to be for a moisture dependent species. So it should have enough humidity to maintain it. And the orchid that I chose is one that I bought from Equigenera. And this is the Speclinia grobii small. This is a micro orchid and the foliage gets pretty full. And what I like about it is it puts on several small flowers that bloom constantly. Pagopus lividus, commonly known as the cobalt blue tarantula. This species is native to Southeast Asia with a wide distribution of Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Females can live 10 to 15 years, while males usually 3 to 4. Adults can reach a leg span of about 5 to 6 inches. They are a fossorial species, and sadly even though they are incredibly beautiful, they are known to be pet holes, usually only coming out at night or by being coaxed out with food. They will spend most of their time living in their extensive burrows, only venturing out in search of food. This is a very skittish and defensive tarantula. They prefer to retreat into their burrow or run away from you if given the opportunity, but if cornered, they will not hesitate to give a threat posture and or slap the ground. They possess medically significant venom and will not hesitate to bite if provoked. If housed properly with enough substrate, you most likely will not experience any of the threatening behaviors from them at all. Cobalt blue tarantulas have a reputation for being very terrifying tarantulas, but in most cases it's usually because the owner has not provided an adequate enclosure with plenty of substrate for it to burrow, therefore giving the tarantula no opportunity for retreat. If this is the case, you will most likely have a defensive tarantula on your hands every time you open the enclosure because it will always feel cornered. C. lividus has been a staple in the hobby for quite some time and was highly sought after because of its beautiful blue coloration. Recently, I've seen renewed interest in the species because of the green variants that have become popular. These variants are known as Cyriopagopus lividus green femur and emerald green. After investigating a little, I have seen them mentioned as far back as 2013, but there seems to have been a resurgence of this color variant in the hobby lately. They are believed to be a regional color variation from the Prachuap Kirakan province in Thailand. Both seem to come from the same general locale, and there is little color difference between them. I imagine the two will become synonymous, and the two bloodlines will become muddied over time in the hobby. This is a moisture dependent species, which is why I chose to put mine in a bioactive enclosure. The substrate should be damp, but not to the point of sogginess. I've included moss and even an orchid for aesthetic purposes, but also to remind myself to water the plants as well as the enclosure. I'm really hoping that the plants take off and that this enclosure ends up looking like a mini tropical paradise.
another good rehousing in the books, especially for a species that is supposed to have such a bad disposition. Now, I'm not saying that she does not. She did give me a little threat posture there, especially the second time around when I had to dig her back out and put her back on the cork bark and everything. But it's kind of interesting to see how when you put them on the cork bark and they're out of their element, they have a tendency to freeze. They just want to sit there and not be noticed. And it was tough to get her to move around. I wanted to get some shots of her walking and things like that, maybe even a threat pose, but she didn't do that for me. In fact, she gave me a little half-hearted threat pose when she was in the enclosure, a little bit of rocking there, but her fangs were not out. They were still tucked. So, you know, I, I, I take that as a plus and I'll take the good ones when I can but she could have been a whole lot nastier and she was not um, she did try to bolt for me a couple of times but I was ready with the catch cup and, and it wasn't too bad it wasn't a real big attempt but it was just nothing I could have captured because it was going to happen too fast so I had to put the camera down and catch her and uh, so you know I didn't get any walking scenes of her you know I enjoyed it it was pretty cool it was nice to have a little pleasant sit down with her and be able to take some photographs of her that I'll post later on on my Instagram. So, you know, overall, I really enjoyed this one. I'm really liking the enclosure that I put her in. The ZooMed was not my first choice. I would have preferred the Exoterra 12 by 12 by 12 because it has the double doors. But now that I have her in there and having that single door with the big glass on it, it gives me a nice clear viewing area without that line in the middle interrupting it. So I actually really like it. So even though I said in the video that I did not like it and I preferred the Exoterra, um, I'm kind of changing my mind about it. So I'm thinking about getting some more. I've got some more species that I want to rehouse into those types of enclosures. So look forward to those in the near future. And that does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Your support is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, I have a link down below in the description, as well as all the others. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.